Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I'm the Cyber Guru. Thank you for watching. So most recently, I had the opportunity to purchase myself a new router, and I also got along with it a router table, which I had not had before. Now the long, uh, the short version of the story is that I got, I broke the bit lock of my old router, which is a Craftsman router that my father gave me from many, many moons ago, and I couldn't get the bit out, so I had to buy a new router. In fact, the roundover bit is still stuck in there, and I need to figure out a way to get it out, but that's not the point of this video. This video is a build video time lapse of me building the router table and then doing my first uh, roundovering, uh, routing <laughs> of the uh, cutting board that I had made most recently. So uh, let's cut over to the time lapse and I'll uh, do a voiceover and walk you through exactly what's going on and then uh, show you the results. So here I am unboxing. Uh, it was uh, very well boxed. I think as you can see, it's uh, a lot of cardboard around the metal parts. Everything was held together properly. Uh, not a lot of plastic bags, which is good. Uh, but all the individual parts here were boxed up very, very well. And I was impressed with the way that it came kind of wrapped. You can see the paper there. It looked uh, very good. So I'm reviewing the manual here, trying to uh, sort all the parts. I actually spent quite a lot of time sorting parts um, the difference of all the few uh, screws and bolts and nuts that are, you know, 12 millimeters versus 15 millimeters was very challenging. You can see here I'm, I'm trying to sort through and match them to what was in the manual. And then, you know, whether it's a button head or, uh, you know, a, a lag nut or something, you know, it, it was really, really challenging. They could have done a much better job of uh, kind of breaking the screws and the bolts and the nuts up uh, by the size and the type. Would have definitely helped uh, speed. So here I am. Uh, putting the top on the legs. This was very straightforward. Once you found the right bolts uh, and you got everything adjusted, it was actually quite hard to figure out which holes. You can see I'm trying to line it up here. But once I got it adjusted, it was very straightforward uh, getting the bolts in and just using the uh, ratchet. Uh, you can see here, there I'm ratcheting the, the top down. And so it, it was very easy to install from this point. And, and quite honestly, this is you know, this is like 70% of the job because <laughs> um, there's just the router plate and the router to be attached uh, and the, the plug in this particular case, which we'll be showing next. So here I am just ratcheting down the bolts. I tightened it um, pretty much all the way at this point. I didn't feel that there was any additional adjustments that need to be made to the legs uh, now that it was in place. So so here is the a, the face plate for the plug, uh, which actually has the, the on-off switch as well as the plug for the router and one other receptacle. I'm not entirely sure what that might be for. Uh, I guess if you use a light or something. But you can see me here kind of reading through the manual, trying to figure out which one of the right bolts were. Again, it was really, really challenging. And then trying to get this attached uh, with one person without anyone else to hold it was a little bit challenging. And then it kind of just dawned on me that I can put the bolt and nut in and screw it together and then just slide it in. There's two little slots there. There's no hole. So that was kind of a, a V8 moment for me while installing that. And then uh, I'm going to pull the top up here real quick. I just install it on the top. Uh, same sort of situation. Just going to line up the holes. Uh, now the, the plate does mount from the back forward. It was a little awkward, uh, quite honestly, trying to get it in there uh, with just, just me. But uh, it was pretty straightforward once I got it working. And then you can adjust it kind of up, down, left, right uh, before you tighten it down. But pretty straightforward otherwise. Uh, next, we're going to move on to uh, building the fence. Uh, I, again, once again, the instructions were not terribly clear uh, about what the orientation of this fence was and what was actually up and what wasn't. And then how the uh, dust shoe here attached to it. So. I actually uh, futzed around with it. I thought I had it right, and then I actually had everything upside down, uh, not only the fence, but the dust shoe you can see here. Um, and so the proper orientation you can see there is the, the right now the, the face is actually down. The face of the fence is down. You attach the dust shoe kind of sticking out like that. You can see that now. And then the, for Mikey here, you attach this. Uh, I had them backwards. Uh, the, the instructions had a, very, uh, had a call out saying, hey, make sure that the... Uh, the kind of chamfered edges were out. Um, I, for whatever reason, when I put them on the first time, I was like, hey, they should go on the inside. But uh, good thing the manual did call that out. That was very fortunate. Um, but it all worked out in the end, and you just got to attach the bolts and attach the, the knobs on the back. And then this little, uh, I guess, dust protection device, if you're not, if you're using the fence, just goes on kind of in the holes there. And it's just, it's, again, a little awkward to adjust. Um, 
because of the way that it's set up, but not too bad. Now here I am, I put the, the router uh, face plate on and I, I try and adjust it to make sure it's flat. This was exceptionally tedious. I cut a lot of this video out um, and it turns out, uh, you know, you do all this leveling and then, you know, once you put the router on the face plate here and put the router on, it needs to be re-leveled anyway. So I uh, didn't have to spend nearly as much time as I did getting that off. So taking the, uh, taking the base plate off the router here and uh, then I'm going to attach it uh, to the router plate. Again, I cut a lot of this video out. It took me forever to find out which one were the right holes. Uh, the manual is actually pretty good about uh, being able to figure this out because I had a Bosch uh, router table and a Bosch router, so it was pretty straightforward. But you can see me here rotating it and trying to figure out exactly where it lined up. It was not readily apparent. So ultimately what I ended up figuring out is the, the index hole for the uh, up-down adjustment uh, for from, from above was the was the kind of the key thing there is once you found where that belonged then the rest of the holes aligned here now they had me put these uh, 20 millimeter m4 screws in one of the holes i really don't think was long enough so i kind of had to force it uh, so ultimately i ended up uh, backing the screws out and replacing them with shorter screws so as you can see here i put the router in with uh, the router plate with the router attached and i had to go ahead and readjust everything uh, the good news is gravity did its job there and made it a lot easier in this case. And now I'm attaching the, the plate for good. Uh, once I tighten it down, I did a final check here on level and it turns out it wasn't level. Um, and I had to back it out a little bit and then adjust some things you can see there. So quickly putting on the router plate. Uh, again, it's just a matter of putting the right screws in the right holes and screwing it down right there. Now that we've attached the fence, uh, everything to the fence, uh, I'm going to uh, finish installing the bolts. You can see that I'm, uh, I'm taking one off here, the bolts that allow the fence to slide back and forth. Uh, so I had uh, put them on previously and then forgot to put the washers on. So you gotta make sure you do that and then you just slide the fence back into place there and get ready to put the feather boards on. So here we go, next I am uh, attaching the feather boards to the uh, to the faceplate of the router to the uh, now they're just temporarily pushed all the way to the top here uh, if so I ultimately ended up taking them off because I don't really need them just hanging out there but I just wanted to make sure I knew where they were gonna fit and how they fit in so you can see the feather boards there and ultimately I just took them off and threw them in a little bin on the side uh, near the end whenever I was actually gonna do some routing So this is, uh, I took it out to the garage and here I am doing my first route. You can see the fence is off. I had a little uh, uh, cover there to stop the dust from flying everywhere. Um, I didn't have uh, any sort of hose attached. I just had my kind of hose hanging in the back there trying to suck up as much as I could, which clearly it's not doing, but it worked pretty well. Uh, one uh, critical mistake that I made is that the router uh, speed was set too low. So I was getting some tear out, which I wasn't expecting. Um, with this router, you can adjust the speed, so it really needed to be a much higher RPM. Final step is just to take the uh, dust right and uh, suck everything up, and and then we're done. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. So I showed you the full unboxing, the full building. Overall, the build actually took probably close to four or five hours predominantly because I spent most of the time reading the manual, trying to figure out which bolt to use for which hole and, and which nut, because there's different nuts for different bolts and whatnot. Uh, so I definitely would say that if they were to maybe package the bolts and nuts differently and maybe uh, put them according to the, 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 the progression of the build, it would be a lot easier to build. It probably would only take an hour at that point, but um, the longest part of time really was uh, between sorting it and then leveling the, the build plate, the router plate there was probably the longest amount of time. Overall, so far my impressions are pretty good. Um, I was really quite honestly underwhelmed with the results of the router. Uh, I, again, I think that's because I had it set way too low in speed. My old router was one speed full on, or full off. <laughs> uh, so I guess that's two speeds at the end of the day. But um, so uh, 
adjusting the speed of hopefully will help uh, make it a lot better for the next time. So I'm going to do some more work on it. And, you know, if anything magical happens and I feel that I need to re report out, I will. But otherwise, I would recommend the router table and the router. It looks like it's going to work out pretty well. And, you know, that's what it is. So uh, if you have any question, questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. As always, if you don't like the video, appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Very important these days. Ring that bell. And uh, hope to see everyone soon. Thanks, everyone.